I'm Jerome Weeks. Henry McArdle painted the Battle of the Alamo and the Battle of the San Jacinto, the two famous murals that hang in the Texas State Capitol. After more than a hundred years, a second version of the San Jacinto painting was discovered. Heritage Galleries is auctioning the painting in Dallas. Atlee Phillips is Heritage's Director of Texas Art. Atlee, welcome to Think. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. Around 1898, uh, McArdle painted his first Battle of San Jacinto. Yes. And he loaned it to Texas State Legislature in the hopes that he would get paid for it. <laughs> so why did he come up with a second version? Well, he was commissioned to paint this version, which is very nice that he would actually get a paycheck for it. Um, he, he was commissioned by a man named J.T. DeShields, who was a Dallas businessman and a historian who was sort of always up and down on his finances, but he loved to support artists whenever he could. And he commissioned many paintings having to do with Texas history. Now this version is smaller than the first. Still, it's it's a five by seven foot painting. It's a big painting. So how could such a thing be forgotten or lost? Well, you know, when someone has something up in an attic for generations, you know, once you get a couple of generations down the line, you know it's there, but you don't really think about it very much anymore until you're getting ready to, you know, clean out the attic or something like that, and you kind of rediscover it. John Buell, a, a descendant of, of McArdle, mm -hmm. contacted uh, you at Heritage uh, this January. Mm -hmm. What convinced you that this was genuine? Well, I mean, it, it was a little f funny. I, it looked very real to me, um, but considering the painting was hanging in the Senate chamber, that was uh, you know, a little bit of a surprise. But with a little research, I found um, a mention in a fantastic book by Sam Ratcliffe, who is at SMU. Um, in painting Texas history to 1900, um, one line that mentioned a smaller version. And this information ca came from a letter that's in his archives at SMU. So maybe one or two scholars knew that it had existed, but they had assumed that it had been lost in a fire that DeShields had at one point. So no one really went out and started looking for it anywhere. So the Buell family was in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Did you go and, and visit? Did you see the painting there? I didn't. Um, we actually had it, um, it once w I saw it and showed it to Sam, there really was no doubt you know, what it was. We knew that the painting had existed at one point. So I, um, I basically just worked with them over the phone. It, it was in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. So it <laughs> took us about three weeks to find a company that would go up there and pack it properly and ship it back down here. Now, the Battle of San Jacinto was uh, a turning point in the Texas Re Absolutely. Revolution. Um, but because it was a surprise attack, uh, General Santayana wasn't on the, the battlefield. Mm -hmm. But take us through a number of the notables who appear on the painting. Sam Houston, for instance. Well, Sam Houston is definitely the most important, recognizable figure. Uh, they show him in a moment that is very famous where his horse has been shot out from underneath him and his ankle has been shattered. Yet he still leads the charge up the battlements and does not stop despite his injury. Other, other people that we can, that we can recognize there? Well, um, Edward Burleson is on a horse. He was the commander of the volunteer army. Um, Burleson County is named for him. Mm -hmm. Then um, two other great figures that we know of are Henry Carnes mm -hmm. and Def Smith, who led a very famous um, charge over the battlements to engage a colonel, um, Antonio Trevino, um, in, in a fight, and it was one of the most celebrated moments of the battle, it was sort of a turning point. Now, Captain Henry Carnes, as you mentioned, is depicted here, but there's also a separate portrait of him. Can you explain the significance of that? Well, um, there was one other painting in the attic. I wish there were a lot more. <laughs> um, but uh, this is uh, one in particular that he painted uh, corresponding with his sister. And he did this a lot. He was very obsessed with historical accuracy. And um, m most of the figures who are known figures, they're actually portraits. He's studied them. He's made sketches. He's communicated. He even communicated with Santa Ana by letter um, to try to make everything as accurate as possible. And in the course of that, he painted a lot of portraits. So he painted these initially separate portraits of the people that he, that he was planning on depicting. Yeah, I mean, I can't say for sure whether the portrait was painted before or after, um, but he was definitely making sketches and drawing all kinds of things in his sketchbooks. 
Now, the, the painting isn't in exactly in top-notch condition. No. Um, it was dirty. It has some holes in it. But I understand that um, Heritage is leaving the restoration up to, to any purchaser. Why? Well, there's a lot of reasons. Um, I think the biggest one is that there are a lot of collectors and institutions who have very strong feelings about one conserv conservator over another or one kind of conservation over another. And a lot of times with something as important as this, it's, um, it's good to let the buyer decide how how they want to handle the conservation. Tell us a little more background about uh, McArdle. He was an Irish painter who came to, to Texas. Yes, he, he came to Texas and he was a map maker um, during the uh, Civil War and he was with Hood's Brigade during the Civil War. In fact, he painted a very famous um, painting that was lost in a fire at the Capitol in 1881 of Lee in the Wilderness. And that's actually how he got interested in the Texas Revolution because, of course, many of the Hood's Brigade um, had um, fought earlier in the Texas Revolution. And so when he started talking to these veterans, he got more and more fascinated with Texas and eventually came here and started painting Texas history. So why did he paint these giant murals in, in Austin, the, the Dawn at the Alamo and the Battle of San Jacinto? Well, I think that he had a really unique vision compared to other painters. I mean, th this was very popular subject matter, especially after the Civil War. I mean, people didn't want to think about the losses of the Civil War, but the glorious past of the Texas Revolution was very appealing at the end of the 19th century. Um, but I think that, you know, this is the reason why you know it was painted at this time mostly for money <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't get paid actually. no and that's a famous story he would paint these things and and give them to the capital and hope eventually they'll buy them in fact the uh, family was never paid he was never paid until after his death in 1927 by an act of Texas Congress mm -hmm. Very quickly, could you tell us a little bit of the differences between the two paintings? Well, that's really important because without actually having seen the painting, you know, having rediscovered it, we would never know that it's not a, a study um, that was done or a copy. It's a it's a new reimagining of the battle. You know, the the original he put a lot of effort into making sure all the spatial relations were correct. He surveyed the field. All the troop movements are in the correct place. But in this one, instead, he's taken all the vignettes, all mm -hmm. the most important moments of the battle, the most important figures, and put them into one unified composition. Uh, it's really a new way of looking at the battle, and it helps create that narrative that you know defines what it means to be Texan and Texas history. Well, thank you very much. Thank Good you. Luck with the auction. Well, it was a yeah. pleasure. Find out more about Henry McCardle's painting at artandseek.org. Chris? Thanks, Jerome. To access our free podcast, you can go to the Think page of KERA's website, kera.org slash think. And we'd like to know your thoughts on the show as well. You can email us at think at kera.org. My name is Chris Boyd. Thanks for being with us, and have a great week. To learn more, go to kera.org slash think. Think is made possible in part by Dell Services. Dell Services develops and delivers a comprehensive suite of IT and application services, business process solutions, and consulting services designed to help customers succeed. For more information, you can visit dell.com services. By Southwest Securities, a nationally recognized regional brokerage firm that's been meeting the needs of Southwest investors for more than 30 years. Southwest Securities is a member of the New York Stock Exchange and SIPC. By the Executive Education Center at the University of Texas at Dallas, providing degree and non-degree programs to help corporate professionals and executives stay ahead. On the web at som.utdallas.edu slash executive and by the valued support of KERA members. Thank you.